What's up, bro? Today I'm going to tell you why music theory sucks. And is this a clickbait title? Do I actually think that music theory sucks? Yes, I do. Here's why. Now, I often tell people that I don't know a lot of theory, and that's kind of not true. I'm kind of lying. I went to music school for like five years, and there was tons and tons of theory. I took these four music theory classes called Music Theory 1, 2, 3, and 4. But what they should have been called is what Bach did 70% of the time. I don't use any theory for anything I do. Literally anything. I'm not joking. I don't use any theory. But to be fair, that's just me. That's just me and my purposes. There are a lot of purposes in which theory can help. I want to preface everything by saying that. Th there are uses for theory, and I simply don't have uses for theory. And you might not have uses for theory. So the things you do need it for are like improvisation. If you're playing jazz, you got to know some theory. You want to do like chord accompaniment? You should probably know some theory. You should probably know some shapes. And of course, there's the skill of like learning how to read music and stuff like that. That could be important in, in certain contexts, right? Like if you're playing with an orchestra or something, it does help to be able to decipher those notes, okay? So first, I want to talk about arranging um, and how I don't use theory for arranging. When I'm working through an arrangement, I'm not concerned with chord names, common chord shapes, specific keys aside from, you know, the starting key. That is kind of important, but that's not really a, that's not really a theory thing modes, uh, scales, any of that crap. What I'm doing is I'm listening to each individual note in each individual chord. I'm focused on what is the bass note, I'm focused on what is the melody, and I'm focused on what are the notes that could potentially fit in between those two things. And that's why I really think ear training is quite possibly the most influential and important thing you can do for arranging. If you can hear a pitch and figure out where that pitch is on the guitar, you can arrange literally anything. Now, of course, I know how to do like a standard D major shape in first position. I know how to do like a major bar chord shape. And there's gonna be times when you're arranging something that like you're gonna come across these shapes and it's gonna make sense for what you're doing. More often than not, especially with some stuff that wasn't written for guitar, you're not going to be using normal shapes. This music wasn't written for guitar. So when you try to squeeze a composition to fit your preconceived ideas about the way the hand should be laid out, you're going to find that you just can't really do effective arrangements. And of course, that's going to get harder when you got big old chords. Dog, okay? If you got like five notes, like some wild ass cluster chord, it's gonna get increasingly difficult. But that's the trick of ear training, baby. You're trying to decipher individual notes within a chord. And the less you concern yourself with, oh, this is like a A7 add 24 or whatever the hell, the, the less you're gonna be locked into specific ideas about what how chords need to be structured. I'm not thinking any of that stuff. And because of that, I'm kind of free to hear exactly what's happening and then just like distill what are the important notes and then find out a place on the neck that works for that particular spot in that particular song. It's not an exact science. It, you're, you're always gonna come across new shapes for your hand. You're gonna come across new solutions for hitting certain notes. All you need to work on is recognizing pitches and figuring out where they are on the neck. So let me give you an example, okay? I'm listening to a song, I'm trying to arrange, and I come upon a chord, right? I know there's a chord, I know there's a bunch of notes in the chord, um, but I don't know what those notes are. Now, you can come at it from a few different perspectives. One of them is like, okay, I can hear that the bass is an A. So I know this is one of my five A shapes. Unfortunately, maybe that particular chord isn't from one of your five A shapes that you've learned in your little uh, jazz guitar book there. So instead of thinking of it like, okay, this is this is an A minor, this is an A major, you, you wanna think about it in terms of like, what is the bass note? Can I hear the bass note? Okay, the bass note is here, right? Or it can be played here, get the same note. Okay, what is the highest note? What is the melodic note? That's the most important one, right? That's the melody. Okay, that's here. You're 70% you're of the way there. 70, 80% of the way there. A lot of times you're only going to be playing the bass and the melodic note. But because of the nature of a guitar, because of how physically limited it can be in certain positions, you're not going to have access to that many notes on the inside. 
So unless there's like a very specific inner voice that you're trying to accommodate within the chord shape you're working on, I'll just peck around and I'll go, okay, this note happens to kind of work. Oh, actually, I kind of like this note a little bit more. Or wait a second, I can play this open string and that's gonna make it give like a more fleshed out feel or, or a bigger feel in this chord. It's really about finding the bass and the melody. Okay, well that covers arranging, but what about composing? What about composing music? I had a friend back in music school. One day we were chilling in a practice room, just chilling, dude. And I remember this one time I was playing a thing that I had written and he happened to like it. He thought it was real cool. He told me, hey, Sam, I want to wrap my own music on guitar, but I got to learn more theory first, dog. I, you know, I'm just not ready for that. I need to get them theory knowledges up in my brain before I start writing my own music. You know what I said to that guy? You know what I said? I said, theory sucks, bro. You ain't got to know theory to start writing your own guitar compositions. In fact, I think that at any level of your playing, you could be a straight beginner from just, it's the first time you've touched a guitar. There's no reason to not start writing your own stuff if that's what you wanna do, if that's something you're interested in. Because really the thing that's gonna get you more proficient at writing music is writing music. That's the main thing. Of course, listening to different styles, learning new pieces of music, learning what you like, all that stuff is gonna help you. But the main thing you gotta do is write music. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you any of the chord names or any of the scales or the, the modal shifts or whatever the, whatever the hell's going on in any of my compositions on my channel. And there's really only a few on my channel. Stay tuned, there's a lot coming. There's a lot on the way, baby. Get ready for that Sam Griffin guitar original album, my dog. You feel me? Okay. At any given time, you could take you could take what I'm playing or, or what I'm writing and go, okay, here's a chord right here. Okay, here I've arrived at a chord. If you if it takes snapshots, I'm only arriving at chords because I like the way that the melody and the bass and the inner lines are moving together at that particular time. And in a lot of ways, I do know some guitarists who they're kind of set in certain shapes in sort of guitar comfortable finger positions. And you can see that in their compositions, you can see that in their arrangements. And I can't help but feel like these guys and gals are kind of boxed in to the theoretical structures that they've learned. And maybe I'm kind of being unfair to, you know, music theory as a whole. Uh, um, a lot of what I'm referring to is like, specific guitar shapes, specific guitar scales, but usually people just interchange those kinds of ideas with the ideas about music theory. There's this one time I was kicking it with another guitar homie and we decided, hey man, let's write a piece of music together. That'd be fun. And then the first thing he said was, okay, what key do you want this to be in? And I was like, what? What do you mean what key do I want it to be? What did that, that's me, that means nothing to me at this point. That's a completely arbitrary uh, thing to decide. Like, how about we, we think in our heads of a cool me melody, or we start noodling around and find like a cool, you know, chord structure or, or bass part or whatever. The point of it is, you know, music is music, man. Music isn't music theory. I mean, music theory is great for certain things, but music theory is just a crude way of trying to rectify what music, actual pitches and actual rhythms is, is doing to us emotionally. You know, the key word there is theory. It, it's really, it's a lattice and you just wanna make sure you're not bound by that lattice. That, that lattice doesn't become the walls of your house. Break those walls down, bro, okay? It doesn't matter what chord you're playing. Hey, I don't care if it's a shape that you know or you don't know. Just slap a finger down, slap a finger down, and slap a finger down, okay? And feel, and listen, and decide if you like it or not. And then slap it into a new position, and decide if you like that new position. So to sum it all up, music theory is trash and you just have to forget all that music theory that you know dude and be like me man do things my way my way is the best way i know i'm probably in the minority with this video and this might get some down votes and that's totally fine um but if you downvote me you're wrong okay and i'm always right my bro i'm screwing around i don't actually feel that way i wish i had more theoretical knowledge i, I wish i knew the notes on the fretboard you know i'm just jealous of people who know a lot of theory but that's not actually true either. I'm screwing around again. I'm not jealous. I just haven't found the uses for theory in things that I do in particular. I went to music school. I went to music school for like five years and there was tons and tons of theory. 
okay? I went to music school for composition and guitar performance. From the get-go, with guitar performance, I was playing in front of people, I was learning guitar pieces. That makes sense, right? I'm going there for guitar, so let's get me better at guitar. With the composition stuff, I had to go through two years of theory classes before I was even allowed to start private composition lessons, which is just so beyond me. There wasn't one private composition session where I used any of the theoretical knowledge that I gained from the four theory classes that I took. And I'm not kidding, none of it. I would write something, I would bring it in, we would sit there and listen and he'd be like, oh, this is really cool. Maybe do some more of that. Or what about like, if you did this instead on the bottom, boom, and he'd play a new note. And it was all just like, how does it feel? How does it sound? It was never like analyzing the chord and being like, Oh, when you're in this key with this chord, you could go to a Neapolitan six chord and then, you know, modulate from the pivot or whatever. It was none of that crap, man. Because again, you know, I say crap. I don't really mean crap. I just mean none of that stuff, right? Because that, again, they're all words that are trying to describe what music actually is, but they're not actually music, okay? That's my video about why music theory sucks. As you can tell, I'm somebody that doesn't know a lot of theory and I'm just upset and I'm jealous of people that do. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you like it. And if you subscribe, you could also just hit the bell, dog. And you can leave me a comment down below and say, Sam, you're a stupid idiot, bro. I learned a bunch of theory and it helped me write music and it helps me play really good improv. And that's fine, dude. Go ahead and thumbs down this video if you want, but please don't because that wouldn't be good for the YouTube algorithm. Peace out, my guy.